Anyway, so, so this uh, um, so that's uh, one version, one um, illustration of how there are additional things you have to start to take into account that previously we would uh, ignore as much as we can. So uh, let me just uh, um, show you with the simulation some of the things that are kind of fun, uh, much easier to show with a simulation than with the uh, uh, real world objects like this. Like uh, this is the lecture demo where I illustrate uh, the counterintuitive role of friction force in a rolling motion like this. I'll leave it to you to watch. Let me um, show you the uh, version of that in the simulation form. Uh, so what's uh, nice about simulation is that in a you know, real life version of the demo, um, you have to fill in a lot of the gaps. So you can imagine there's a tension force here because you see a flexible cord that appears taut. And because this thing is accelerating, you can imagine there's a net force there. But it's <laughs> up to you to fill in all those gaps. It's up to you to draw the free body diagram, figure out all the forces and, you know, uh, so uh, maybe in you know, some distant future, we'll have augmented reality glasses that can uh, overlay all those information for you. But so far, you have to fill in that information without a benefit of someone doing that for you. Now, in the simulation, in a 100% digital world, the nice thing is, um, you know, it's uh, super easy to just uh, have that all done for you. So, you know, as you look at this, I can actually, wait. that looked super weird. Sure. Okay, I guess that's fine. Um, you can actually visualize a bunch of quantities. So right now, as this is sitting here, you know, is nothing going on here? Are there no forces here? I mean, we've all done all this like a month or month or so ago. So you know there are there's gravity and there's normal force and all that. Now, you had to, you know, we had to go through that uh, about a month ago. With the simulation, you can just illustrate them. <laughs> you can just show. Um, so yeah, gravity is turned on. And I think it had all the forces turned on. And I'll keep the net force off because um, having net force on top of it, all the individual forces can sometimes be confusing. So yeah, there it is. There's my block with all the things on it. And if I change it to property, so that it's uh, heavier than there's greater gravity, but it doesn't do anything because there's greater normal force on it as well. And, um, oh, so I think I can do this. So, so this is a, a tool that can help me kind of move this about. Now, normally um, when I move this, sorry, it's super dizzy. All right. Um, why does it turn red? I'm not sure. Maybe that's just when it's big. Now, um, you can see how depending on, so, you know, this is trying to simulate the motion of this realistically. So when I grab it near the center, then, you know, as I move it about, it just uh, translates. But if I grab it near the edge, then my pull also uh, causes it to rotate as well. Um, while that's useful, more often than not, that's, um, um, that that, uh, that kind of makes it harder to manipulate it, but maybe um, huh. I haven't tried this before. Uh, let me just do it this way. Um, so I can simplify this a bit by limiting the uh, pull to dragging the center of mass. Then no matter where I click on, it'll just uh, uh, it'll always drag center of mass. So that um, you can see in this pizza slice shape that uh, it doesn't rotate as I move it around. Now, let me briefly turn off force. As I pull this sideways, you'll see that, oh wait. Oh, wait, what, um, sorry, one second. Um. I don't know why this is not, does it not have friction? This friction, oh, uh, the bottom doesn't have friction, that's right. <laughs> so 
all right, that kind of the ruined the surprise. But so as I drag the center of mass, even though if I move it up this way, it's not rotating. You see that if I drag it sideways, then you'll see that it rotates, even though uh, <laughs> even though um, even though I'm still dragging the center of mass. So whatever pull that I'm dragging it with, it doesn't apply any torque. It doesn't apply any kind of thing that will try to get it to rotate. So, um, but as I pull it, um, so you can see that as I, it touches the bottom, it rotates. And the reason it's rotating, you can see it when I turn on the forces. As I pull this sideways, you see the, um, yeah. So I think I have to kind of pull it downward a little bit so that there is a friction force. So, um, so that big upward arrow, that's because my uh, applied external, can I, um, let me just turn off all the forces except for, I think a controller is what my uh, finger thing is. So, wait, no. I can't tell. Um, my finger thing doesn't show. Um, let's see. Normal force. So my finger thing is at least as uh, large as the normal force bar. Oh well. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that was a bit of a... So yeah, let me just turn on all the forces. So as I pull with my finger thing, um, you can see that it, so what's getting this to rotate are those friction forces that you see. And, and, and this illustrates the rolling without sleeping condition. When you see it, it's, uh, um, I think I, uh, let me see if I can do this. I think I can attach a small block. and glue this to the, not glue to background, but uh, oh, add the center axle, or let me try add the center axle, yeah. Okay, then I think what I can do is now I can track the, uh, track the motion of that single point on the uh, on the circle thing. Let me see here. Um, yeah, I think that does what I wanted to do. Yeah, and you can kind of see um, how that uh, point moves. So when we track its velocity, there are points in its motion, or when we track its speed, uh, this is plotting speed. Um, there are points in the motion where it has practically zero speed. And um, if I let it roll for a bit, you can see that, let me, <laughs> let it roll much slower so that I have time to talk. Um, you can see that the point of motion where the velocity of the point goes to zero is when that point is touching the ground there. And so, yeah, so that's a rolling without sleeping. And um, to get motion like that, you need the friction. Um, as you will see, let me just, uh, oh, let me, let me turn, move the motion back to regular speed. Oh, yeah, that's, so <laughs> that probably has some lesson about conservation of angular momentum. Um, so, you know, if I, so, sorry, I kind of just spoiled the, this portion of it a little bit because I didn't check the setting for the material property of the ground. But when you have a ground that's a frictionless, then, then, you know, it just slides. It doesn't, there's no 
rolling without slipping. That kind of motion requires there to be friction. So um, let me just uh, uh, do the, the simulation version of that uh, physical demo that um, you've seen me do. So, or you will see me do in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in the lecture video. So what I want to do is let me see if I can first bring this to a stop. And um, so this is the question that was posed. So instead of pulling this with a string, I what I can do is I can attach a thruster. And I can attach a thruster here. Rotate it. And um, with the thruster, I can have a property so that it doesn't follow geometry rotation. It just uh, gives only constant leftward force. Um, and I think um, I think a five newton will be small enough. We'll see. So this is the question that I have posed to the class. Um, if I turn this thruster on, let me have the activation key. Oops, set up. Um, if I turn this thruster on, uh, which way will this wheel rotate? Um, or uh, I guess uh, <laughs> to um, to start out with something that's easy. So we could. So the scenario that most people get intuitively is this scenario. If I have the thruster on the top and I'm applying, sorry, why did that start doing that? Um, if I apply rightward the force, then I can ask the question, well, which way will this wheel roll? And most people will answer, it should roll to the right. That is such a small thrust. I mean, it's doing it, but it's doing it so slowly. Let me just to make this lighter. So uh, most people will say it should roll to the right, and yes, it rolls to the right. Good. <laughs> um, so the harder question that uh, not everyone gets, and I think even if you know what the correct answer is, I think there's a benefit to working to understand the reason why. Is So if I now ask, when I turn the thruster on, which direction will this wheel roll? Um, greater fraction, or I guess most of the times it's a half and half. Uh, half the class will say, oh, it'll roll to the right, because you know, you're imagining clockwise rotation. And the other half will say, it should roll to left, because there's this leftward force. So which is it? And when you actually try it and turn it on, what it does is, yeah, it rolls to the left. And, and in the real life version of this demo, then this is where you have to do the harder work of analyzing the, doing the force analysis. Now, because we are in this uh, much uh, nicer simulation, we can simply visualize the forces. So you can see that I already have gravity, I have normal force. And um, when I turn this uh, thruster on, uh, let me see how the forces look. Wow, those are such tiny forces. I don't know if... Uh... <laughs> um... All right, so... <laughs> Having um, praised the virtue of simulation, I will tell you um, one thing about visualization is that you have to get the values in the about the right range so that um, the things that you are trying to visualize do work the way that you mean them to. Okay. So I needed this thruster force to be larger so that uh, they show up uh, larger. Okay, there it is. <laughs> so when you get these settings about right, let me just slow down the simulation so that I have more time to talk. When you have this uh, thrust force on, then 
you can see that while the thrust force is pushing the wheel to the left, there is a rightward friction force that, uh, uh, that's acting on this spot. And it's actually resisting this motion. It, uh, uh, so without the friction, the wheel would simply slide. And what the friction is doing is it's making it so that this point of contact doesn't move. And um, and in combining both of these forces, you see um, reconciliation of those two pictures. One that said, um, because you have this uh, clockwise torque, um, it should roll clockwise. And because there's this leftward force, it should roll leftward, which would be counterclockwise. Um, and I guess in that picture, what's wrong is the view that uh, there is a clockwise torque. There's in fact counterclockwise torque because you have to consider both of this pull and the friction force. And as you will see with the definition of torque uh, being introduced this week, um, torque is given by the distance times the force. So even though this friction force is smaller, it's at farther enough a distance that um, that the torque due to friction will be greater than torque due to this. So, so yeah, that's a, um, one illustration of something that um, you have seen in lecture. And uh, let me just leave this here that um, as a kind of uh, recommendation that um, it's a simulation like this, because So, you know, in lecture, I try to cover things that I think are interesting and um, try to be reasonably thorough. But then there might be other situations that are interesting that I didn't cover in lecture. And um, it, it's a kind of, it's a structural deficit of a lecture format, which is that it's uh, one way. I think of something to lecture on and you watch the lecture and um, especially in the online setting where it's harder for people to ask questions when you have a pre-recorded video and the pre-recorded video doesn't react to your questions. Um, I think a simulation gives you a platform where you can explore on your own more interactively. Um, the only thing to watch out for when you are playing with the simulation is um, sometimes the simulation just bugs out like watch this, uh, see what happens if I do something like this, making the mass zero. Oh wait, that doesn't do anything. Oh, I guess it's, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe that's not so crazy. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, so with the simulation, uh, sometimes it's uh, harder to see if uh, what you're seeing is an artifact of a simulation or um, or something real. Uh, this simulation, in particular, tends to be very um, very um, uh, temperamental when you are dealing with the rope simulations. And see, um, and. Um, so that's a really one um, a caution about using simulation because I guess it's in the end the downside of this not being the real world. Um, so the simulation should be checked against the experiments. But you know, as you are exploring with the simulations, if you see something that looks odd or interesting, ask me. Um, I, the one benefit of my greater experience is that I do have some intuition about what uh, what should happen in a real experiment versus when a simulation is acting out. Um, but it's a kind of the setup where you can um, explore things on your own or, or explore things in a more interactive way. And while you can do that with a, a wheel on your own as well, the the difference with the simulation is that you have control over the parameters and you can actually visualize things like the forces. And I think you can also visualize the velocities, which um, that, you know, is not as necessary as visualizing forces, at least to me. Okay, so I think that's uh, probably all I wanted to talk about uh, with the algorithm. You know, the thing about simulations is um, 
it, it, I hope we, um, <laughs> this demonstration will inspire you to uh, play with it. Um, uh, now, you do need to have either PC or a Mac. Um, it, uh, the iPad is that version you have to buy. And uh, so um, it doesn't work on Chromebook. Uh, that's one of the reasons I don't have any required assignments that requires Algodoo, because if you only have Chromebook, then you can't use it. But um, if you have a PC or a Mac, then, uh, then please try give it a try. Um,